Hello everyone, in here. As you can see, today the Hogwarts castle has been set slightly to the side of the working area. And the reason is that today I have something a bit different for you. What do I mean by that? This. Let's make this. Most of you probably know the three broomsticks was released last in this set the Hogsmeade village the so-called Hogsmeade village where we have the three broomsticks and honey dukes and probably one day i'm hoping to get to honey dukes as well but i decided to handle the three broomsticks first and the uh working area is quite a mess as you can see for yourselves because uh, I have been practically building up till a few minutes ago and I will probably continue building for a bit more after filming this video. I just wanted to share with you what's going on and mainly the reason is that I will not have time to film for the rest of the day and probably tomorrow. So really want to share this right now and use this opportunity. Now this is going to be a bit different. I will not show you what I have built instantly. First, I wanted to use this opportunity to kind of not necessarily give you a guide, but kind of maybe provide a few steps of what I personally do when I start building a modular building. I know there are plenty of guides out there and people that are doing this all the time, semi-professionally, you can find them on the internet. But for me, it's a kind of interesting to share my perspective and if you can get anything out of that then all the better now what do i do now first of all when i'm trying to recreate uh, an actual building when i don't have to invent it for myself as is the case here i decide what exactly i want to do now when you're making a modular building you're always the first thing that you have to do is you're always constrained by the size of it so most people, they try to confine themselves in a 32 by 32 base plate, which is a good discipline way to begin. But for me, I don't really like to confine myself. And although I, especially in this particular case, I really try to stick to a smaller uh, scale. I really don't want to do another massive building like this uh again but it's something to have as a pinpoint now when you have a building like this i always start thinking about it in my head like for a while without doing pressuring myself too much as in just basic rough things and after i'm done thinking and i decide that maybe this is really something i want to do i Kind of uh, sketch it in a piece of paper like so and uh, you can't really see it here too much but i know some people use software and stuff but like i've said numerous times i spend time on the computer maybe 10 12 15 hours a day sometimes and really takes the enjoyment out of me if i have to really struggle to do something on a lego software just to design so for me it's a lot more enjoyable to have a pencil and a piece of paper and you just want to sketch things out as you can see here i have basically just done very roughly one of the two floors and where the doors are where the windows should be if there are any notable objects inside like tables like fireplaces if rooms are separate just staircases anything like that and that's mainly doesn't really do much but for me mentally it helps me to kind of get an idea so when i start building it doesn't really take me to go back and just figure stuff out it just makes the beginning process for me easier and if something that you have a problem with maybe you should try just sketching it out it doesn't have to be detailed it doesn't have to be like um professional you know uh, schematics of a building it's just something that helps your imagination kind of get into gear in a way 
So after I've done that, I kind of start building the, uh, the just the base and to figure out, uh, for example, where the doors physically should be and the windows, because here there is, um, I'm going to show you a picture of the building as it is in the films, or you can see it in the internet. It just, uh, it's important to have the spacing correct. And I know some people don't really uh, feel like this is important, that when you're mocking, you have to uh, be very liberated. But when I try to do something that is based on something, you know, quote unquote real, I really try, if possible, of course, just to keep everything as close as possible to the uh, original thing. So if I see that, for example, the windows are, you know, these, this pair of windows is a bit differently positioned compared to the other ones, there's a little bit more space to the edge of the wall here, then I will try to stay true to that. So once I've figured that out, I start thinking about the interior and the scale of the interior. So when I do that, I go uh, on my computer over here and I take, for example, with this uh, particular case, I've used footage from, well, obviously the Harry Potter movies and mainly the third film, the sixth film, also some uh, custom pictures from games, indoors, so uh, exterior, interior from the uh, online Harry Potter game from Hogwarts Legacy as well. That just gives me an idea how things should be inside and outside. And as I'm starting with the first floor, that's where the sixth film is very uh, helpful. Here I have some screenshots over here. I think, not really sure if I found those now or I just took them out. Uh, from while well, watching the movie and just took a screenshot. So here you can see basically the entrance is here and then there is a staircase and what's to the left of the entrance. And this is what is to the right of the entrance from basically you're standing over here looking the other direction. There's like a bar. And I've opened here like a picture of what the building should look like from the front. Now, uh, if, for example, for this building, if you see, for example, 20 different pictures, you will see probably three, four variations. So it kind of helps building in a way because it doesn't have to be a precise way, but just pick one thing and go with it. And if you can't really stay true to this one model all the way, you can always simply just revert to something else. And perhaps the thing that I do last before actually really start to build a building is figure out the scale of the indoors items and mainly uh, things that are related to minifigures and how comfortable I am with the scale of those uh, objects compared to minifigures because uh, usually we have like chairs, desks, tables, uh, stuff like that. And it really depends uh, what you can fit. So if, for example, if a table is only two studs wide, um, it would mean that all tables probably should be. And also it, if you, for example, here we have to have multiple tables. So uh, if we want to make them bigger, we will have to, uh, enough space for, for example, the chairs. Uh, obviously, chairs can't really hit one another. Chairs also should, how big should they be? How many studs they'll take uh, as they are stuck together or next to one another. So that really, it really helps to figure that out earlier rather than later, because otherwise you have to go back and it's really annoying to figure out, well, actually what I'm, was thinking doing all this time can't really be implemented here because I don't have enough space. So if you figure that out early on, it really helps on uh, not to slow you down later. So with those little things now mentioned, I, uh, let's just switch to the model that I've done so far and we'll talk about it in details as I do in all my videos really. And if there is anything else that I might want to add or have missed, 
course, we'll cover that as well. All right, so here is what uh, we've done so far. And uh, I've tried to stay true to the original set a little bit, although uh, this turned out to be quite a lot bigger than I initially thought, but making it any smaller would just drive me insane, really. So um, I've decided to keep this front section here, although this angle here of the roof shouldn't be symmetrical, it should be slightly tilted. Um, I will probably end up figuring that out later. But it turns out that the spacing here of four studs of the entrance and everything else really still feels good in this slightly bigger configuration. So I decided, well, let's just keep it for the time being and then maybe later figure out the colors a little bit, maybe change this uh, light bluish gray thing, maybe change this, maybe uh, just change the ornaments a little bit and how they're positioned. But for the time being, this just gives me a little bit of a kind of focusing point to grow uh, out of. So. The next thing, uh, as I mentioned, the windows, see how uh, the uh, spacing here is. Uh, the building is not symmetrical. The door is not in the middle of the building itself. It's slightly to the left and right. It uh, took me a few tries to figure out where it should be exactly because although I sketched everything out before, as explained, when you place everything and then you start placing interior, it turns out that maybe a stud to the left or to the right really solves a few problems. Uh, but still, it's good to figure out a rough positioning. And then maybe if you have to uh, switch a little bit, one, two studs to one direction or another, it uh, really is not that much of a big deal. So yeah, I've uh, kept this like uh, so with this side being a bit shorter than the windows here being kind of uh, the same proportion as these ones, but obviously there is more space here. And there aren't really many um, pictures from the side. I found some uh, models that are not even regulated, but it turns out that there's probably two windows here on both sides that are the same as the front windows frame-wise. So I added them kind of in a way, not necessarily in the middle, just they don't have to correspond with any walls and kind of being in the middle, so good enough. And then the back side, um, the few pictures that I did find, we have a bit different windows uh, that these stereotypical ones kind of fit, but there are these shapes of three and it would maybe really help changing this from black to uh, the ones that I use here, the ones in uh, pearl gold. I think they will look better rather than the black ones, but we'll see. And there's actually a back door, which I've added just uh, this one. Maybe I'll replace it one without a sticker, maybe a different one, but just for the time being, this wall here. Now I ended up moving this a little bit, uh, I think once, because this door was slightly over here and this door was hitting it. It wasn't really aesthetically pleasing. Also, the door needs to not correspond with these windows, so I kind of moved them. As you see, they're, they're not, the door is not symmetrical to these windows, but it really isn't on the pictures I did find, so uh, it's fine. And also, it's the back, so no big deal there. And the outside texture of the walls themselves, I use the same colors as the set, which I think is nice uh, with the masonry bricks and the clear version. Here we have a line of dark bluish gray and here we have dark tan all the way up to the middle section. Now, uh, obviously I'm really a big fan of something like this, but if I have to spend even more pieces and uh, time and money, most importantly, on something like this, a site building, then uh, it would really break my soul. So for the time being, let's just keep it simple or a lit little bit more simple. And in the future, if I feel like the last thing that this thing is missing once it's finished is the improved texture, we'll go back, spend the money and improve it. One thing that I always try to figure out early on is the base because we want the uh, building itself to be solid. and 
Although I do like mills, the idea of the mills technique and having a solid base with brick not doesn't always work for me. And uh, I don't always place that. So in this case, I didn't want to. So uh, I decided, well, since the building is probably going to have snow around it, let's use that to kind of reinforce the flooring and have this little kind of uh, outer ring with a white plate. And I've played just some random things from the set that I feel that are good and should be present. Might end up removing them, you know, the tree, the light post, the bench, the serious black poster just to kind of give me an idea of how big things are. And then I uh, decided to use uh, the schematics to frame this these pillars. And let me tell you, these pillars, I have remade them several times as the building went on. Because initially uh, it was the spacing was different, it kept changing, you know, it depends on the stairs, it depends on the door. It kind of needs to be aesthetically pleasing. So I kept moving it left and right, left and right. It was a bit forwards as well. Uh, ended up pushing it a little bit backwards because I didn't want to interact with this window at all. First of all, this pillar here wasn't present, so it wasn't a problem. But then it appeared because I had to place it. So I have to had to pull it back. And now uh, these uh, pieces here in uh, the old brown... There is a closet here, according to all the pictures, where it's a sealed uh, room, for, probably a closet. I don't know. I'm going to use it as a closet or some room to stock kind of uh, different objects or food. And I really wanted to seal it off, maybe place something interesting there. But uh, browsing from my parts, I just... Uh, found these uh, old brown uh, big elements and it really felt like using them here would be very appropriate and really happy to uh, implement them finally and uh, made me change everything here again but I think now it's really really nice because these pillars are uh, framed into the walls so they're pretty sturdy. Also, they're attached to the uh, stairs, which are pretty sturdy now as well. And the whole wall is really, really nice. And it's always a problem with me, especially with walls in big buildings. You just come out a little bit flaky and unstable. But here, I feel it's uh, very, very nice. And then <clears throat> the stairs, I'm not really sure. Uh, I really wanted to use these pieces here because they seem to be pretty accurate to how the stair railing should be but then only them is kind of uh, not good enough and then this thing here follows the right pattern but it kind of looks weird to me maybe I'll remove it ending up using something with a clip from the top and just some tiles and plates that are not really attached here we'll see uh, or I might just keep it like this it kind of looks a bit weird to me but no too much to annoy me at least for now next the fireplaces I um, wanted to make them kind of simplistic but at the same time you know not uh, too simplistic so masonry brick and obviously it's going to correspond um, with the fireplace on the second floor and that's something that many people do miss uh, I know that Lego doesn't always have to have so much logic, but if it does, it kind of makes it better in the long run. So obviously there is a second floor here and there is a room here. So this fireplace will extend uh, over here. The other fireplace on the second uh, floor will also be here, continuing to a chimney and same with here. Now, although the second floor is not really built, I'm going to um, kind of guide you through what really is should be going on and uh, actually in the only time we kind of see the second floor I feel is in the third movie where uh, Harry goes inside the three broomsticks and obviously is in the invisibility cloak and is not seen while um, 
the minister and the press are gonna go is with the uh, woman that owns the the uh, three broomsticks whose name now eludes me I apologize but yeah he goes up the stairs and there is a room somewhere here which is going to be from here either a door over here or maybe a corridor and a door over here and the room is basically going to cover this place here so there's going to be a fireplace here as well in that room and um other than that over here there should be more tables either in this direction as well or up to here and over here and haven't figured out if it should be another platform or it should be just a higher ceiling with um, just chandeliers and things not really sure which route to go there but still a little while till I actually have to implement it and next the tables and the chairs I want to say something about those now it's always annoys me when I have to figure out tables and chairs because they're always not wide enough and they're not they're always too simplistic to me and here the tables are kind of figured out a decent way to to do them uh, like this uh, two by three uh, actually it's a three by six sorry table and with uh, these elements here on my camera doesn't want to focus on it for some reason there we go and I feel like uh, the chairs still need work. Now we have this chair here, which I like. But the problem, maybe if I put it on the table, it would be better. The problem is you can't sit on it, you know, there is no studs. But as a model, it looks good, you know. Haven't figured out the chairs yet. So I've placed these uh, pre-made chairs which size-wise are good. It, they do take two studs, but this uh, backside kind of takes a little bit away from the next stud, so you can't really put two of them back to back within a four stud uh, diameter. So really want to figure out something else. They are, however, you know, convenient. Uh, they do the job, but I am planning to change some of them. I've also since there is a bar, I've also figured out a way to do a taller chair. I think I'll do two of these or something like that. Uh, just to have the opportunity for a few individuals to sit at the bar, which I feel is, you know, nice. I found that I have plenty of these uh, tiles here and uh, the bar should look okay now maybe I should make it a little bit longer but I'm not really sure it should be all the way up to the other side of these pillars or another two studs I think like this is fine I made this shelf here put some bottles there and uh, other than that I'm not it was important to um, have the same how should I say, feeling to the uh, tavern compared to what I see in the film. So, for example, when you enter, you have the table where Harry Ron and Hermione uh, sit in the sixth film. And behind them, there is at least one more table. And here, next to the fireplace, there's also a little table where some people are drinking, if you see it in the film. And here is the table across them where Slughorn is sitting and Harry goes to him at some point, or I think Slughorn goes to them at first, or the other way around. And here is the table where Ginny uh, is sitting with, now, what was that boy's name? Names really keep eluding me, but yeah, Ron sees his sister with another boy sitting here having a date, and their table should be around here. And the main problem is that here I want at least four tables, but the space is just just about not there. So there are a few options he here. Now we can't really shift this table a bit more here because the chairs will hit the door. So that really doesn't really go. Uh, we can't really shift towards the bar too much because we want to have space for these chairs here. And the only thing I can figure out 
right now is if we have a combination of chairs, because the chairs, as you can see them in the films, they're not all the same. They're all wooden chairs, but they're not identical. One is a bit wider than the others. They're different models. So that kind of is nice. It gives us a lot of freedom. So if I make different chairs, and maybe the ones that are not used are smaller, like these ones, so we can push this table a bit further, and technically nobody can sit there because there are no studs, and the chairs, the, the chairs are smaller, and the place, the space between the chair and the table is too small for an actual minifigure to sit there. Actually, there is a chair, so it looks aesthetically pleasing. So we can kind of cheat that way maybe, but still even with that, I feel like there isn't enough space. So maybe I'll have to kind of not really keep it as true as I want it to be uh, and remove one table and maybe flip this one uh, 90 degrees so we'll have enough space. But I'll still have to think about that a little bit. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Also, um, the next thing I'm going to work on is adding all sorts of ornaments on the uh, walls. So I've added these uh, mistletoes here, if they are mistletoes, I mean, it looks like it. And there are going to be three broomsticks hanging up. Now we have one here, one here, and this one over here, the third one, different color, which I'm going to place somewhere on the second floor, okay. mounted on the wall. And uh, there are a few stickers here that uh, are in the set that some have not placed, really not figured out if I should place all of them or should place something else. And the next thing I'm going to work on is this closet over here and how exactly things are going to be uh, put inside, what uh, exactly is going to be there and so on. And other than that, uh, yeah, I feel that's all. One thing <laughs> is the floor. I figure out the floor again Surprise, surprise, it's going to be dark tan, but it is pretty much dark tan in the film, so not much choice there, and it's very simplistic. I'm either going to use 1x6 tiles or 2x4s, probably 2x4s. Now, I always want to do the floors very, very quickly, but it just this time I've restrained myself not to do it. It's just a big hassle because you always have to go back, so my advice is really leave the floor for the very, very, very last thing you do. Imagine doing the floor, like think about it all the time. How it's gonna be, can it fit, will it be okay? How are you gonna place things on the floor? Uh, but the actual placing on the floor, you should really leave it. I should probably leave it even after, after everything is done. And I should leave another week or two to think about things before maybe changing them and then place the floor. Floor should be the last thing to do, uh, which is an easy thing to figure out, really. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, but it, for me personally, it's always like, especially when I finish a floor or I'm about to finish it, doing the, the pl placing the tiles so it's not these ugly studs don't, are not shown or the color that's used, because here I've actually used the same color of plate because they have plenty of dark bluish uh, gray plate laying around and uh, I usually use all sorts of different colors so it looks terrible but maybe that's the reason I haven't placed it. Everything being in one color helps uh, my just way of thinking. But anyway, uh, how big is this? I mean I've not really counted but it's about if you place it next to a normal, this is a 16 by 16 so Basically, it's 16 studs up to here, and then we have another 16, so 32, so about 40-ish or so studs. Uh, and over here, we got 16 and another 10, so 26. I think it was like 50, 58 by 26 or something. I wrote it down somewhere. And I'm looking at my notes, but it's not there, so I must have written it someplace else. Yeah, good job me. Anyway, it's a little bit bigger than uh, I originally thought it should be, but it's really um, 
I feel like it sh it shouldn't really be any smaller uh, compared to the windows and the door and everything else would just feel to me like the model is shrunk too much uh, out of proportions. So other than that, uh, I'm hoping to do some more progress on this uh, since the piece is here for the improved texture and the windows are I'm still waiting for those. Once I get those pieces, there are going to be plenty of work here, probably weeks and weeks of building walls and windows. It's going to take quite a while and then obviously cover this second module of the Great Hall as well. So uh, I'm going to use that time to you do this. Uh, do not know if I'll be able to finish the how quick it will go. Uh, actually, actually built quite a lot more than what I thought I will be able to do in this these two weeks. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to do the exterior of uh, the whole building up for next time. But we'll see. I might get uh, sidetracked doing interiors again and something else. Who knows? Uh, or I might pick something that I want really to do that I don't have the pieces for. So I have to go look for them, wait for them. You know how it is. But uh, hopefully uh, next time I'll have uh, a lot more to show you again. It will probably be with for this little project. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to tackling this. It's been actually a lot of fun, kind of doing something different and thinking about a different uh, problem and model to tackle and not have to work with Tan so much again. So yeah, uh, my hope is, my wish and hope is for to do a decent model of this and then I'll do a Honey Dukes as well. And maybe after that something else that is uh, positioned in Hogsmeade. We'll see. That's for the future. And with that being said, I think that's everything for today. Another long video. Uh, no surprise there. So YouTube algorithm is going to hate me, but what can you do? Thank you again for watching. If you like these videos and you feel like uh, anything I say or show you is helpful, uh, liking and subscribing really helps me. Uh, helps my exposure and for other people to see my content. Uh, always appreciate any ideas and feedback that you have. You can follow me here on YouTube, on Instagram, and on my Discord server, all of which you can see on my profile page. Thank you again, stay healthy, and I'll see you very, very soon once again. Bye for now.